I'm Matt Easton, and this is a rolling pin. Oh. Take two. I'm Matt Easton, and this is a rolling pin. Ow! 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 So what we've discovered is that fezzes provide practically no head protection at all, at least from rolling pins. But why am I hitting myself in the head with a rolling pin? Well, that is a question which many people ask. But um, some time ago, years ago now I think, I did a video which um, was parodied uh, wonderfully, and um, I'll put the link below to that. And the, ironically, the video that uh, used an extract of one of my videos and made fun of it, in an excellent way, and I'm not bothered at all, uh, was far more successful, I think, than any video I have ever actually made. Um, but let's have a look at the salé for a second. So, um, in that video, I stuck this salé on, which at the time was a new acquisition, and uh, I stuck it on my head, and to demonstrate the fact that uh, helmets do work, I put my visor down, and I dunked myself in the head. And yes, that doesn't hurt even remotely. This is tempered carbon steel. Um, you can get salos which are mild steel. Y you can't say that one is necessarily more historically correct than the other. We get um, hardened helmets and we get unhardened helmets in, in the 15th century. But good quality um, helmets were often made of hardened carbon steel. It, you can only harden it if it's carbon steel, incidentally. If it's mild, what we would call mild steel, they didn't really, I don't think they had a name for mild steel. They'd just call it iron. Um, if it was iron, you can't, you can't harden it, at least with heat treatment. You can work harden it, but you can't uh, harden it with heat treatment. It needs to have above a certain amount of carbon, can't remember the exact amount, um, for you to be able to quench it. But the point is, why am I holding the rolling pin? I should be holding the salad at this point, not the rolling pin. Um, the reason why I'm talking about this now is very briefly, and this is actually a brief video for me, as you guys will know, um, to talk about the fact that it is really loud inside a helmet. So we've recently talked about the fact that um, helmets are something that a typical soldier wants to be able to wear for most of the day, conveniently, and be able to um, see and hear and talk and eat and breathe and do all of those useful things um, whilst wearing the helmet. And it, for it not to be a massive encumbrance, you don't want it to be hugely uh, hot or heavy or to restrict you doing the things that you need to do. So if you're a soldier, you're primarily, you know, a typical soldier, not a knight, not, um, you know, some kind of shock troops, but your, your job is basically garrison duty or patrolling, okay? Those are the main things that, that soldiers are going to do, apart from drinking and sleeping. Um, and um, you, you're you going to do that job. So you want to be able to see, you want to be able to communicate, but you also want something on your head that means that some peasant with a rock can't just go clunk and uh, knock you out okay so you do need something up here and this is one of the most popular 15th century styles of helmet if we go a bit earlier to the 14th century we would see typical soldiers common soldiers wearing things like kettle hats or um, bassinets indeed that's a bassinet but that's a sort of knight's version of a bassinet a bassinet without the visor on with an open face um, with or without an avantel, we see both. And various types of salé. This is more of um this is a more of a sort of Italian style 15th century, mid mid to late 15th century Italian salé. Um, but there are English styles of salé and there are um, German styles of salé and so on. Um, but the, the point is that when you do get struck on a helmet, and this is the point I wanted to make, because I'm quite famous for smashing myself in in the salé with a helmet. Now I don't know how loud that sounds at your end of the screen, as it were, okay? But for me, it's super loud, and that's something that people don't necessarily appreciate with metal helmets. Now, in the modern world, we mostly wear helmets made of plastic or Kevlar or some other types of modern material. We rarely wear metal helmets. And a lot of people in the modern world, uh, and some reenactors, it has to be said, are under the uh, impression that metal helmets normally have padding inside. Well, some do, okay? I'm not gonna say they don't, some do, but the majority of metal helmets don't have padding so much as that. And you will see that inside here is a, a web, much like inside a modern builder's helmet, incidentally, or indeed some cycling helmets, but it's made of leather. 
Um, so it's sometimes referred to as a, as a spider, I think, but it's more like a web than a spider to me. Um, but essentially it's a band which is riveted around the outside of the of the skull of the helmet and that sometimes ha is uh, separated from the helmet by space sometimes it has some padding around it sometimes not um, and then it has bands that go into the top uh, usually with an adjustable element in the middle um, that enable you to adjust the fit because remember of course that armorers making helmets like these would be churning out hundreds or thousands of these things each year um, and they can't make them to fit each individual's head. A common soldier would just go and go into the shop um, and try on several helmets and go yeah that fits okay and buy that one and then they'd adjust the liner inside and yes absolutely I could add padding into that and I could add more to the liner. In fact if I was using this in combat I probably would um, put some type of uh, woolen liner just to make it a bit more comfortable on my head because you guys may not have noticed but I actually don't have any hair on the top of my head. Uh, for any of you with hair out there, your hair is natural padding. Evolution has put it there to protect your head from incidental, inter, incidental bumps to some degree. And hair inside a helmet, particularly if you've got long hair or bushy hair uh, or a massive fro, then it's gonna help impact resistance to some degree. For me, I've got nothing. Uh, there's just me and a helmet. So uh, I might need to add uh, some simulated hair in there, in other words, padding um, between me and the um, helmet. But the point is that because there isn't very much padding inside there, there isn't very much to absorb stuff. When, oh, that's actually not loud. So that's interesting. From the outside, that's not very loud at all. I can tell you from the inside, that is really loud. I was going to use a different word there. It is really, really loud inside and it really kills your ears. And that is actually the only point I really wanted to make in this video. Obviously, I'm fairly good at blathering on about other things. Um, but the point is that helmets, metal helmets, whether they're steel or bronze or iron, um, when you're inside a metal helmet and it's getting hit, it is incredibly loud. So, the next time you're watching a movie where someone's getting bashed in the helmet, if they remember to stick a helmet on anyone in any movie ever, um, or if you're um, playing a computer game or doing role-playing games or wargaming or whatever, remember that people inside armour, not only can they not hear very well, but if their helmet is getting bashed by things, or even, believe it or not, if it's raining, even if it's raining, imagine when you're sitting inside your car in a rainstorm, think how loud the sound of that rain is on the roof, uh, or indeed in some people's houses or in this building I'm in at the moment. Um, rain can be really loud inside, but anything that's coming down and impacting on the outside of that is really, really loud in your ears, and your ability to hear is already bad inside a helmet that covers your ears. Incidentally, an important advantage of the kettle hat or kettle helm over one of these, uh, these cover your ears, offer more protection at the detriment of your hearing and some other things as well. Um, so there we go. Hearing, difficult in a helmet already, if there's things hitting your helmet, be it arrows or just equipment or rain or weapons or whatever, really, really is really, really loud on your ears and it impacts your ability to hear. And when you add to that as well, surrounding noise like people yelling and crying and screaming and giving orders and perhaps gunfire man your ability to hear anything inside a helmet um, can be super difficult now when you remember that and you ah lock the visor shut when you remember that um, the noise and your ability to hear is so bad already inside a helmet that covers your ears um, now, or, and remember, even a helmet that doesn't cover your ears, you might have a coif or an avantail or something around your ears anyway. But given that you can't hear, sight becomes even more important because if you want to know what your commander wants your unit to do, you need to be able to see what the flags and the signals are doing um, over there or maybe, you know, maybe um, even commands with the, with the hands or whatever. You need to be able to see if you can't hear because you won't necessarily be able to hear any commands at all inside a helmet, especially if you're in the middle of being hit on the head with a rolling pin. Bye folks, don't wear a fez when someone's hitting you in the head with a rolling pin. Bye. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers folks.